Hello friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kuboman. Today's video is about a ticket that came through the system that we're going to work. So if you're doing help desk or tech support, this video is really good for you. In my videos, I like to take time and explain how to fix things, but also how to go about realizing why things are being fixed as they are. It's one thing to just tell somebody this is how you fix it, but do you really understand of why the issue happened and why the fix will actually fix it. So this is how I go about all my videos just to make sure that everybody understands what I'm talking about and also so it's easier to follow. By the way, thank you so much to people who left kind messages for me, uh, kind comments I should say. I really appreciate it. I see you. I really do see you guys and your nice and polite comments are so motivating i really really appreciate it and yes don't worry i will definitely uh, make more videos like this uh, as as often as i can but again thank you so much guys i i appreciate it it's very very uh, motivating thank you all right so first thing first i'm going to assign this ticket to myself and then i'm going to see what this is about <clears throat> So the person that reported the issue ours is our good friend Mike Moser, and it says, <clears throat> "Excuse me, start button, search, and taskbar not working." And it says here, "Hello, my start button, search, taskbar are not working today. Uh, nothing happens when I click on them. Please help, as I can't work without it." So that's pretty understandable. Uh, we definitely want our start button and search button and of course taskbar to work because without it it's it's a big big issue right especially when you're used to using those things so we definitely got to fix this and the priority on this is probably it's a medium uh, because um, you can still work technically by using desktop icons because you can select any of those and you know work with, with like that but of course if you can't use your taskbar then things get super complicated every time you open up multiple windows as they gather on the bottom anyways we'll definitely talk about that for sure uh, but first thing first uh, we got to get a hold of this customer we got to get a hold of mike and we got to ask him to give us give us his uh, host name or ip address uh, host name meaning his computer name so that way we can use remote desktop uh, software uh, to connect and take control of his computer so that way we can work on this issue Preferably, you might want to talk to him on the phone, but if you can reach out to him over instant messenger of some sort, um, that's fine too. Just make sure to let him know that you are going to take control of his computer because this is not an easy fix. All right. So here is our workstation that I use for this type of uh, for these type of issues. Um, in this workstation, everything is working fine, and uh, and that's perfectly fine because I don't want to break my computer. And the reason for that is uh, I'll tell you why uh, in a minute here. But I can't recreate it in the sense where I if I click on the start button and not work, or click in here and not working is because I would literally have to break my operating system entirely. So in his case, he cannot click on the start button. He cannot type it into search and he can't use any icons. So even if he goes over here, for example, and opens up Google Chrome or Edge or just any application that he opens up later on, he can't even click on any of these things to open up them up like that. Right. So that's a big, big problem. And the reason that actually happens is because uh, Windows service that is used for this function has stopped working. And um, every time I see this issue, that's what happens. And you can see this service in your task manager located under here. And I'll definitely explain to you how this is actually part of operating system. If you go to services tab here in the task manager, and if you scroll down here and you can see a service that's called W search, it would instead of instead of saying running, it would say stopped. And the reason uh, for it to stop um, is because of Windows uh, corruption. This would never be manually stopped in any way because it's set up to start automatically. So what is this Windows search? It's literally what this is here over here. So if you your start button, when you click on start button, you go in 
and you're searching, right? You're searching for the application that you need to use, right? So that's part of the search. Um, I know a lot of people think of as an operating system as just the one thing and that's all one thing, but no, operating system is actually a combination of services that are running in the background, just like you can see in this window and the task manager. So this part here, start button, search button, and even the task bar is directly related to this Windows search function or Windows search service. And for it to work properly, it has to be running just like it is here, okay? And if you find it that it's not running, it would literally say stopped here. You know, if I stop it here, it's just going to reset itself and Windows normally functioning doesn't care if you do this. Uh, but if you see it stopped like this, one way to restart it, and it works sometimes, but you have to keep doing it, is to uh, restart Windows Explorer. So what is Windows Explorer? When you open up a folder like this, so if you click on the folder icon, you're not actually just opening up a folder icon, you're opening up what is called Windows Explorer and you explore things with the Windows Explorer. <laughs> no, there's definitely a better way of explaining what that is. It's basically your main operating system function or main GUI, graphical user interface. Everything that you see visually, that's all graphical, right? So Windows Explorer handles that, which is <laughs> to show you uh, or to give you the ability to explore what's inside of Windows. I think that's the simplest way of explaining it. And yes, it's also a service, but it's a service that directly relies on function of other services to uh, to function and to be working properly for it to work properly as well. So when you, as a temporary fix, you can restart uh, Windows Explorer. And if you go to your task manager and you scroll down, you'll see again, we're looking for a folder just like we saw earlier, this folder icon. And there it is on the bottom. We can simply right click it and select restart. And whenever I do this, it's going to restart and the computer is going to, computer screen is going to flash. You'll see everything that's visual here, all these icons, even the background, everything, everything, it's going to flash. That means exactly what I talked about is that Windows Explorer handles everything that you're visually looking. So let's go ahead and click restart. All right, you see how everything just kind of went dark and it came back. That's because Windows Explorer restarted and with it, it attempted to restart and, and sometimes it does all these other dependent services. You see how this is back running now, all right? The status is back to running because Windows service itself, a uh, Windows Explorer service itself re reinitiated all these other services that are required to work in the background. So I'm going to, uh, I, I think that's a really good explanation that, that we have there. I think everybody should be able to understand how that functions, uh, but I can certainly reiterate that. So let's go back. We know that Windows search function here is this, this is the service, and this is just a little part of this. It's start, search, and that is that right there, Windows search. And then we have Windows Explorer, which is everything that we see. Windows Explorer, uh, a lot of times, if it's a really, really bad situation or where the Windows is corrupted in such a way, and that, by the way, that's the main reason why this Windows search function would stop to working in, in, in to begin with. If it's corrupted really bad, this Windows search function or Windows service will not will not be able to uh, restart it at all. So what happens is, uh, in the worst case scenario, the Windows Explorer, again, everything that we're seeing here, it tries to initiate that, but it can't. So the worst case scenario is uh, it will stay, you know, just kind of blank like this, and it will start to flash. Um, I'm going to restart again just to show you. You see how everything goes black? Whenever this part is corrupted, this Windows search, when you are not able to reinitiate it by restarting 
Windows Explorer, it's just going to get stuck to a point where you can't see the icons, you can't click on anything, and the taskbar would be flashing because it's going to continuously try to restart Windows Search Service, but it won't be able to. So again, for Windows Explorer to function properly, it has to have these services running in the background, especially in this case Windows Search, because our issue is the Start button and the Search function, uh, along with the taskbar not working properly, uh, it has to have this running in the background. So the reason it stops working like this and you can't reboot it is because Windows is simply corrupted. So to fix that, uh, the only way you can do this is to run PowerShell. What we're going to do is scan the file system, or I should say the operating system, um, kind of the same difference, is to see if it can find any corrupted files. And if it does, uh, then we can tell it to replace them. So the command to run PowerShell and for the Windows, it's for the Windows to, for PowerShell to scan the system for any corrupted files, it is cfs space forward slash scan now. Okay, and then when we hit enter, it's going to start um, scanning the system for any issues. Oh, you have to run it as administrator. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right. That's a good thing, actually. You guys have to know that as a administrator, you have to run things as administrator. You have to use elevator privileges for it to happen. All right. Now when I put it back in there. Okay, see ya. CFC forward slash scan now. Okay. So now it's going to start to begin this verification process. So what it's taking is literally has a template somewhere and it takes that template that says, okay, all of these system files are supposed to be there. And now it's scanning the system to see if they are there and if it can open them up and if it can run them. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that it's tried to open them up and run them because that's pretty much the only way to see if it's corrupted aside from the obvious of like, for example, let's say the template says our Windows service, um, it's supposed to be a certain size. Let's say it goes through and it's scanning and it scans this function. And the simplest explanation is if it finds this function and it says, well, it's missing something, let's say it's different size, for example, or it's missing some kind of part of data, it would know you know, it would say how many bits or bytes are missing. And that would be like the main indicator right away. Like, oh, well, this is not right. We're going to have to repair it. We're going to have to replace it. So that's just one indicator. But I'm sure uh, they use some other indicators too to see if something is corrupted. All right. I'm going to wait for it to finish. And then I'm going to um, continue um, talking after it's done. All right. So it's getting close to the end of its scan. I uh, want to kind of emphasize that this scan only does is just verifies whether there's something wrong. It's not going to actually replace or repair anything. And for that, um, if if it comes up with an error where it says there's something wrong, some of these files are corrupted, you will have to uh, run a specific command, which I have written down here. So we can actually go in and it's going to update and repair any of the system files. So it says here, uh, Windows uh, resource protection did not find any integrity violation. So it didn't find any problems with the system files that I currently have on the system. Of course, because we know that everything is working fine on this specific computer. But if you're working on a user's computer, uh, chances are that if you have this type of issue, you will get a problem notification. Even, even if you don't, you can still run this command and it will go ahead and, and, and do its thing. It will go online and it would uh, download and reinstall um, any missing files or corrupted files, which I'm not going to run now, but here is our 
a command that we're going to type in that we would type in in Windows PowerShell which would execute that operation all right so it's DISM forward slash or space forward slash online telling it that these are online uh, files that it needs to get and then the function of cleanup image you know it's going to you know restore and, and check to see what it's missing and replace anything that needs to be done and of course uh, you know restore health um, and yeah that that that's what it does after that is completed your start button um, and search function should be working properly as intended if it doesn't um, then in that case you have to re re reimage reinstall windows uh, unfortunately but this should and it does fix it most of the time all right now we're going to go back to our ticket so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, I have repaired search functions on the user's computer save and I'm going to complete this ticket all right guys thank you so much for watching I appreciate it I hope you like this type of video uh, I, I know a lot of people like the way I explain things. Let me know if you're new, because I know majority of people who watch my videos are actually um, not subscribed, uh, which, is, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, if you happen to be new or just accidentally come across my video, let me know if you like these type of explanations. What I share is real world examples. And uh, I, I try to um, explain it in such a way where it makes sense, the reason why you're doing it, uh, the reason why it fixed it, and this and that. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, enough said, I suppose. And uh, you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.